Sunset Park says, do you have any ideas why I have killed 20 ESCs in the last three months? <sighs> How did they die? How did they die? What were you doing when they died? Uh, I'll show you a, a, I got a sim similar question to this recently. Um, oh, so I don't want to, let's see if I can show this without actually showing the guy's email. I don't want to show his email. I had a guy who said I've blown, I think this was on the live stream. He may have may, maybe outed himself, but he said I've blown a bunch of ESCs. I don't know why. I've blown like three ESCs in the last month. And I reached out and I said, show me a picture. And sure enough, the picture was, hey, the picture, the ESC was covered with solder balls. I've circled some of them in the picture that I sent to him. And I was like, I, I don't know for sure that this is why your ESCs died. Lots of people have solder balls on their ESC and the ESC is fine. But this is absolutely a potential cause of your dead ESCs. If when you're soldering, these little solder balls go all over the place, all it takes is for one of those solder balls to get into a FET, boom, and it blows. So if you can't figure out how to solder without making solder balls, then put some tape or something over your ESC, but when you solder it, so that the solder balls don't get into your FETs. Um, so Sunset Park, if you've blown 20 ESCs in the last, whatever, three months, Either the ESC you're buying is shit and the Foxier 60 amp, the Foxier Reaper 60 amp is not a shit ESC. So that's not it. Or maybe you have a problem with your soldering technique. A little alcohol and a toothbrush will clean it off unless the ESC has like a heat sink on it that doesn't let you get underneath it. Good quality solder is one way to avoid leaving solder balls. Um... Uh, I, I like to buy Kester solder. I think that here's the thing. I have the, I bought a two pound roll of solder. I, I don't even know. It must've been five years ago. Can I even like, like, can I even find it? Hold on. I'm going to try to find it. I'm going to go to my Amazon account and look at my orders I can. <laughs> January 7th, 2018. I ordered January 2018. How big is this? Is it a two pound roll? Is it a one pound? What is, how big is the roll? One pound. I ordered a one pound roll of Kester solder. Uh, it's starting to get down. It's I've almost used it all up. It's 2023. 1920. It's been five years. And I'm still using the same one pound roll of solder. <laughs> so. Just, uh. Spend 40 bucks on a good roll of solder and you're set for five years or more. Um, the, uh, it's not just the solder, but that's certainly a thing that can cause solder to uh, spatter more. Oh, we're having a big discussion about the solder temperature. And what the best temperature is to use. Ooh, 
I'm not going to, I'm not going to get into that. I run it, uh, I, I run it 850 all the time. 850 Fahrenheit. That is uh, about 450 C. I run 850 almost all the time. Except for 850 Fahrenheit, 450 C. Except for the very smallest of pads. I'll, I'll turn down. I'll turn down for what? The very smallest of pads. When I tin my pads, the solder goes all the way to the edge of the pads. You could say it goes from the window to the wall. If you, if you, if you could imagine the pad as a room and like on the one side of the room, there's like a window to the outside and then there's like a back wall and you, you put the soldering iron down on the pad, you heat the pad and then you, you want to tin the whole pad all the way from the window to the wall. But I don't turn down for for much. I leave it at 850. And some people say <laughs> that uh, that's too hot. They say it gets too hot in here. Your soldering iron's too hot. It's making the it's too hot in here. It makes me want to just take my clothes off. Don't do that because it's not good to solder with your clothes off. It's, you get solder balls will spatter on you and burn you so you know, wear safety equipment and I, I i they say that if uh, your iron is too hot it's going to overheat the board and damage the board but here's the thing the heat that goes into the board is a function of the heat of the iron and the time that the iron spends in contact with the board if you turn the iron down and it takes you longer to complete the joint then you could put more heat into the board than if you turn the heat up and you complete the joint faster. All I know is I get good results at a higher temperature and I can't remember the last time I lifted a pad or floated a component. Literally can't remember. I, I mean, I remember one time when it happened when my soldering iron died. It was like 2017. And I, I threw out that soldering iron and bought the, the Heiko soldering iron I have now. And I haven't had a problem since. So I don't think there's a single answer. If you have skill, you can solder at a high temperature and not damage things. At the end of the day, your results are what matters. Well, uh, you definitely can be too low. Okay. Like there absolutely is a categorically too low soldering temperature. I'm not going to try and argue with you about what it is, but I, I feel like people who say, ah, oh, no, you can't solder at 450. That's bad. It's like, well, shut up. I soldered at 450 for, you know, whatever, four years and I haven't lifted a pad and I haven't, damn, haven't killed anything and it's fine. So the thing is when I solder, when you solder a big thick pad like an ESC, Either you have to change out the tip for a heavier tip or you can just crank the temperature. And you know which one I'm going to do. I'm not changing the tip. So. <laughs> I wish I I wish I knew more rap lyrics to reference. Uh, that I could have worked into that bit, but like I just, I just referenced basically the three rap songs I know, and uh, I ran out of references, and I had to just end the bit. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Don't use the tapping method to regulate the temp. Tapping is a no. Don't do it. Just touch. Solder, take it away. Don't do this. I see, uh, I, I was teaching somebody to solder once and they were kind of going and they were kind of painting and floating. And it turned out this guy was a TIG welder. He, had, he knew how to weld and he was treating the soldering iron like it was a TIG torch. And I was like, okay, okay. You have an excuse for this bad habit that I am now going to break you of. But when you solder... Don't touch or tap or paint or swipe. Touch. 
let it get hot, feed the solder, complete the joint, take it away. That's it. That's my opinion.